Welcome to another video. Let's do another floor and ceiling function. This one was sent in a while ago. Actually, there were two questions on it. I thought there was just one, so I did the first one in a previous video. And I just looked at it again and I noticed that there was a second question. So apologies um, to you if um, this is coming too late, but I hope it helps somebody else. So what we have here is the floor of the square of a ceiling minus one. So it's more like a quadratic equation, but still uh, quadratic inequality. This, I think this is the first time I'm seeing an inequality problem. That's why I'm more interested in it, because it's not an equation. And what we have is, you, you see this is the ceiling of x squared minus one, then everything placed on the floor. Yeah, it could be confusing, but this is a very easy problem to answer. Because one thing you must realize is that, you see, because one is an integer, whether you put it inside a ceiling function or a floor function, you can easily pull it out because you know it's an integer. So we can reduce our confusion by first taking this guy out of this um, floor function, and then things will become a little bit clearer. Let's get into the video. So let's do the very first thing. We're going to say minus 1 is less than or equal to. So I'm taking this guy out now. So it's going to be just this guy, x squared. And I have minus 1. And it's going to be um, less than or equal to 2. So with this, I can get rid of this minus 1 now that it's outside. I can add 1 to each section of this inequality. Let's just add 1 everywhere. So you end up with 0 is less than or equal to the floor function of the square of a ceiling is less than or equal to, this becomes 3. So things are beginning to look very clean, right? Now this is always a true statement. Whenever you square something, it will always become positive. So, this is true. We don't really need to worry about this 0 being less than this because this is a square. So, I can ignore this side and just focus on this one. Now remember that the square, this is an, is an integer already. See, the ceiling of any number is an integer. That's the definition, the integer just above it. So, if x itself is an integer, then it's its own ceiling. If it's not an integer, then it is less than its own ceiling. But whatever happens, this is an integer. Now when you square it, it is still an integer. Now when you put an integer on the floor, inside a floor function, it is still an integer. So you don't need this floor function because this gives you an integer and the square of it is also an integer. So I can get rid of this floor and say that just this guy here is less than or equal to 3. And with this understanding, you can answer this. So, because I don't want to keep writing x and x and x, why don't I just say, let's bring back the Mr. K. <laughs> okay, so let's just say, because we know it's an integer, let's just write this as, let's say let k be equal to the ceiling of x. We're going to come back to that, okay? So, what do we have? We say that k squared is less than or equal to 3. And what does this mean? It means that the absolute, if you take the square root of both sides, remember that the square root of k squared is not k. It is the absolute value of k will be less than or equal to the square root of 3, which I'm just going to write as 1.732 because I'm interested in the integer part. So I'll write 1.732, ba ba ba. We, we don't really care. Now we can rewrite this inequality as minus 1.732 
is less than or equal to k and k is less than or equal to 1.732. What does that mean? k is either minus 1 or it is 0 or it is 1. So the smallest k you can get is minus 1. The biggest k you can get is 1. But we have to go back to the relationship between any number and its ceiling because we just solved a ceiling function. And what does, what does that relationship show? It shows that x has to be less than or equal to its ceiling. Okay, let's say, let's just write here. So we say, therefore, k must be in this set of negative 1, um, 0, 1. <laughs> Come on. Or we can say, another way to put this is to say that minus 1 is less than or equal to k, and k is less than or equal to 1. But k is an integer. You have to, so um, it's not like a regular inequality. So I need to write this this way so we can see what the definition and the relationship is. Now, so this is key because I'm going to use this. Now, what's the relationship between the ceiling and x? because we're looking for x, we're not looking for k, right? We're not looking for k. So we know that if you get a number, let's write this, we know that any number x is less than or equal to its ceiling, which is k in this case. And if you take one away from this, k minus one is strictly less than x. So if k is the ceiling of x, then, k minus 1 is strictly less than x. It can never be equal to x. And this is what we need to use here. We just need to translate it. So we wrap this up this way, saying, if x is less than k, and k is less than 1, then x is definitely less than 1. Well, we know or equal to. So we know x is less than or equal to 1. The other thing we need to know is that if x is greater than k minus 1, then x is greater than negative 2. Because if you, this is the smallest k you can have. And if, this is, if you subtract 1 from this k, remember this is an option for k, then we have this to be minus 2, because this would be minus 1 minus 1. And that's it. So we know also that x is greater than or equal to is greater than strictly rather minus 2. So we have negative 2 is less than x and x is less than or equal to 1. This is the solution to this inequality. It's crazy. It is a quadratic ceiling floor inequality. I hope you learned something and I hope this was helpful and I hope it is not too late. See you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.